children. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. <coughs> Who may ascend? Righteousness from the God of his salvation.
were not true, I would have told you. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you. Before we get to that, God bless you. I'd like to do just a little housekeeping first. If you have your cell phones, please put them on mute or silent in honor of you all, the family. We would, wouldn't be kind, wouldn't be godly for us to be disturbed in this hour of grief and mourning, in this service to your loved ones be interrupted by a phone call. And I ask that all, you, all of you, except those that are speaking during the time that you're speaking, to remain masked for your own safety. We're following the guidelines. This is different times. And first, I need to apologize to all of you for the requirements of having to take temperatures and requiring that you wear masks. It's state regulation. And although we have a minimal here, I think we may have gone over, but I don't count very good, so I see 50. But we're trying to accommodate you all as best as we can. So I offer condolences on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Jesse Kearney III, and the entire New Mercy's Christian ministry family. So first we'll have a, a couple of scriptures read by Pastor Tina Norton, and then we'll have um, Elder Michelle come forward and uh, share some time of prayer with us. And following that, I hope that all of you that are uh, on the program to give reflections would be prepared to come. We're running just a little bit, actually quite a little bit behind, and I know you all have to repass and some time of fellowship scheduled after this. Uh, so with that, I hope everyone will move swiftly so that we can make up some of the time that we've already expired. All right? God bless you. Good morning, family. I'm going to be reading the Old Testament scripture out of the New Living Translation of Isaiah 
the 61st chapter, verse number three, following the New Testament scripture from St. John, chapter 14, verse number one through three. Isaiah 61, one through three, the Bible says, to all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes and joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his glory. Isaiah 61, one through three. John 14, one through three. New Living Translation. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's house. If this were not so, I would have not told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you where everything is ready. I will come and get you so that you will always be where I am. John 14, one through three from the New Living Translation. God bless the reading of the word. Let us pray. Most gracious and holy Father, we come before you today, Lord God, with heavy hearts. Lord God, we come, Father, with unanswered questions. We come, Lord God, with disappointment, and some come with anger. But Lord, on today, we look to the hills from which cometh all of our help, knowing that our help comes from you. Lord, we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would give us an abundance of peace. We ask, Lord, that you would comfort us and strengthen us. We ask, Lord God, that you would uphold us like only you can. Lord, help us, oh God, to go from where we are to where you would have us to be. Lord, help us to remember that Crystal and Danielle are with you. Help us to remember that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Help us to remember, oh, remember, oh God, that their names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Oh God, we ask on today that you would fill our voids, that you would meet our needs, that you would comfort every family member, every loved one, oh God, and everyone who cared about them. Lord God, we thank you on today, God, that this is not impossible for you, that this is not too hard for you. Ah, God, we thank you, Lord God, that we can come humbly and boldly before your throne of grace and receive everything that we need. So, Lord, on today, we ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would put the pieces of our hearts back together. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would comfort us, oh God, where comfort is needed. We ask, Lord God, that your presence be felt and your presence be known. We ask, Lord God, that you would meet our needs and fill our voids of loneliness, oh God, of anger, oh God. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus, oh God, I, that you would answer our unanswered questions. And Lord, in the midst, oh God, of what you're doing for us, in the midst of you doing what only you can do, oh God, we declare that we put all of our trust and all of our hope in you, for you are our savior, you are our redeemer, you are the lover of our souls, you are our healer, you are our comforter, oh God. Ah, God, you are the restorer, oh God. And so Lord, we thank you even now for listening, God, and for hearing us, oh God, and for being attentive unto our prayers, oh God. Lord, we thank you that you understand every tear and every groan and every cry, oh God. We understand, God, that you understand where we are on today, oh God. So we have no reason to feel guilty, oh God, about what we come boldly before you with and the attitude that we have, knowing that you're able, oh God, to give us a greater glory, knowing, God, that you're able to take us from strength to strength, knowing, God, that you're able to give us your peace, oh God, knowing, God, that 
you're able to comfort us, oh God, and comfort our grieving hearts, oh God, no matter how we feel. Uh, God, we ask that you be magnified on today. We ask, Lord God, that you would help us, oh God, to live a life and to carry forth their legacy, oh God, to be better, oh God, in everything that you called us to do, to love one another like we've never loved one another before, oh God, to draw closer to you, oh God, and know that our salvation is secure, oh God. Lord God, help us, oh God, to be everything that you called us to be, everywhere that you have placed us, oh God, knowing that you gave us this family, oh God, knowing, God, that you gave us these loved ones, oh God, and Lord, that that was not by accident, oh God. Lord, we thank you even now, God, for what you're doing in our hearts and what you're doing in our lives because of the life that Crystal and Danielle lived, oh God. Lord, let it take us higher. Let it take us deeper in our walk with you. Let us draw, let it draw us closer to you, oh God, because you are everything that we need, oh God. And in you, we live and move and have our being, oh God. So Lord God, on today, my prayer, oh God, for everyone under the sound of my voice. My prayer, Lord God, for everyone that's connected to these two beautiful women, oh God, is that you would surround them and uphold them and strengthen them and comfort them and give them a, be a measure of peace that they've never known before in spite of. Lord, we bless you, oh God, and we magnify you, oh God. And Lord, we thank you for encouraging us. And we ask that you would help us to encourage one another and love on one another and strengthen one another and be everything that we need to be for each other during this time. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we do pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I hope you don't mind me changing a couple of things in the, actually one thing in the program. Is uh, Brother Michael ready to come and bless us in song? Michael Thomas. Oh, okay. God bless you. And right after that, if those that are going to uh, speak would either sit here on the right or line up on the right, We'll be receiving you right after Michael Boyce.
intricacies of it. The, the amount of faith it takes to love that much is beyond, it's, it's beyond understanding. It's her talent. It was her gift. It was her gift to love and to know how to love anyone, even the enemy. Even the enemy. I want to hate so much, but now I have to train myself to turn that into 
what she would want it to be. Because I want to see her again. I want to see everyone again. I want to see my pop. I want to see my unks. I want to see all of them. And even though I know we got to take care of business here and there, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying, you know, we ain't no punks now. We'll love you, but we still whoop your ass. Excuse my language. Mm, whatever. This is a building. But anyway. Pass the mic. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love you, Mom. I love you, Crystal. I always will be there with y'all, just like you always will be there with me.
is keep climbing. That was a good speech, man. First of all, I would like to say thank you to everybody here from the families. And I want to say one family, say the whole family. Green, Williams, everybody here, we all family. It's not the easiest thing to do to, to say goodbye and bury somebody you really love. Probably the most difficult thing in the world. But we have to move on. When I was thinking about what I was going to say, I was thinking about what was going to be the one thing that each one of them did that I'm always going to remember. And it was difficult, but I, I managed to figure it out. So I'm going to start off with Danielle. Crystal being born. That was my, my moment. I've seen the two women in my life Making it happen. But certainly one thing you didn't know that when Crystal was born, Daniel went through a period for two days. He didn't want to hold her, which I understand. She was going through something. And um, she was, um, I was holding Crystal in my arms when we were in the, bed, in the room, and I was trying to give Crystal to Daniel. Okay, but the third day she calls me up and says to me, I love her. So that was wonderful to me. That was one, one of my best moments with Danielle. And then I would have to say my second moment with Crystal was that um, I was late from work, from work going to pick them up from school. And about five, ten minutes late, and the school had let them leave. Crystal was, at, at the time, was eight, Malachi was four. And because Crystal and Malachi remembers how I would walk with them at home, Crystal was gonna to attempt to walk Malachi. And went across the street, too. And when I got there, I see Crystal helping Malachi with his shirt and everything, and about to be ready to take him home. Told me that she was on becoming a woman. So I'm gonna tell you something you ain't never gonna believe I was gonna say. I forgive Joseph. Amen. Amen. Should I get an amen for that? Amen. Amen. I forgive this man. Because God didn't make us to be like him. We better. Amen. So we're gonna do what we gotta do to maintain and we're gonna remember that this is a joyful day. This is not a pity day. My daughter put a little of her love and happiness in Daniel and everybody in their own different way. So this is not going to be a pity day. I'm going to celebrate. And I'm going to celebrate that my daughter and my ex-wife is in heaven with all our loved ones, and we're going to be there again, and we're going to rejoice, and we're going to have a we're going to have the best party of our lives. So I don't hold no more bitterness to nobody. Because there's no more business left. I love everybody here. God bless you. Hello, everybody. And I want to thank everyone for coming and for those who are live streaming, watching. Um, I'm Danielle's eldest. I'm little Sharice's aunt namesake. So needless to say, when she was born, I was ecstatic when she told me that she named her after me as well. It's not a middle name, but that's good enough for me. Um, 
what I can say about my niece, she was definitely, she takes after her auntie. I'm just gonna say. She's very rambunctious. She's a feisty person and very, very determined and stern in what she wanted and what she was gonna do. And she would protect and fight for you. Now, even as a young girl, she would be protecting her older brother, questioning people like her auntie would do, um, interrogating, what do you want my brother for? What's your intentions with my brother? Why are you looking at my brother like that? That's her, that's how she has always been. But um, when I spoke to her uh, a couple of days before this happened, she was asking me about um, starting a t-shirt line. We was gonna work on that together. Uh, she wanted to get some information. I gave her all the information so she can get some things started. I mean, just the fact that she loves somebody who other people felt was unlovable. The fact that he even admitted that she loved him when nobody else did shows the type of person that she was. And she would stand up against, you know, some of us for him. But um, the fact that she can love somebody that, like I said, other people would feel was unlovable. She was the sweetest thing. She was a fiery thing. And she's always been my, my princess, as her pops always say. Um, I remember my sister Kia telling me how she had told her and how she reminisced about how she was looking for the love that pops and her mom had. And the fact that that was stolen from her really breaks my heart. And um, it, it really does something to your spirit. You know, the fact that she can never get married, she can never have children. My sister would never be able to be around and, and really be the awesome grandmother that she was as a mother to her grandchildren because that was stolen away from her. And as, and as in true Sims green form, she stood against the demon like a pure warrior and she was gonna protect her daughter and sucked up all of, as many of those things that she needed to do to try and protect her daughter and Malachi. She has the most biggest infectious smile ever. Like, how could you not love her? Even when you mad at her, you still love her. You know, you can say you get on my nerve, but She's still gonna tell you, you know, there's times when I tell her I wanna crack somebody's skull, she'll say, come on, Cherise, well, you know, let's think about that. I said, you really don't wanna do that. She know I really wanna do it. But she's like, no, you really don't wanna do that. And the fact when I watched that footage and saw how my sister cuffed her daughter, it was almost as if, if you were really kind of like looking, it's like she grabbed her wings and wrapped her wings around her daughter to try and protect her. <sighs> Malachi said it so eloquently. He said he saw his mother's, you know, parents say, I will die for you. And she stood amongst the demon, faced him head on. You won't be taking them, you're not taking all of mine. I'll go before them. And to, for her to have to go ahead and walk hand in hand in glory with her daughter. They came together. They left together. And I'm so blessed to have been in the presence of them, enjoyed them. Uh, and oh, she loved oh so much. That's all she talked about for years, for years, for years. Oh my gosh, Sharice, oh, makes me so happy. Oh my gosh, Sharice, I'm just so happy. He just, he just makes me feel like, like I just, she just really just couldn't really put it all into words, but she just, I don't know. I don't want to make any, everybody cry. There's so much more that I can say about them both, but I just love them both. And in true warrior form, that's my own Denzel. Nobody else can have her. Yeah. Hello. Um, hi, I'm Jada. Um, I'm Crystal's best friend. Um, I'm gonna start off by talking about Ms. Danielle. Um, she was one of the nicest people I ever met. And not everybody knows this, but for a short period of time, I used to live with 
Pops and Mom Crystal. And she treated me like her second daughter. Like, I instantly felt welcome when Crystal introduced me to her family. And since day one, y'all didn't say, oh, that's Crystal's friend. Like, y'all welcome me as y'all daughter, y'all sister, y'all granddaughter, everything. And I do appreciate that. I love all y'all for that. Um, Mom, we used to, um, we used to call her Big D from the Bronx. <laughs> Me and Chrissy used to joke with her. And she was just so loving, like, she cooked so good. Like, every day when I used to get off work, she used to have curry chicken, rice, potatoes. She used to have all that good food waiting for us. Um, I am gonna definitely miss her. Uh, her smile, her energy, just everything. I'm gonna miss going over there. She opened the door for me, just gave me the biggest hug. And just to see her smile. Um, Crystal, <laughs> I met Crystal when I was a junior in high school and she was a sophomore. And um, we just been cool ever since. I mean, Crystal, we did everything together, <laughs> everything. <laughs> and um, what I can't say about Crystal, she's the most fierce, yes, protective person I've ever met. Like, we would go out, and Crystal would see somebody look at me solid, she'd be like, who that? You know her? Like, just on go ready. <laughs> I remember this one time, actually, we went out, and you know, we were having a good time and everything, and this girl pushed me from behind. And before I could even turn around and see anything, Crystal had already punched her in the face and everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, Crystal, she really was protective and caring of me. Even she, just the little things she would do, um, I always remember it. Um, when we used to go to work, she used to pack my lunch for me, like just do like uh, thoughtful things like that. Um, things that I wouldn't think to do. She would pack lunch for me when I would go to work and come home. She would she would have to do my laundry for me. Just little things like that that you know, you take for granted, and I am very appreciative for every little thing, every moment, everything that we had together, and I am gonna miss her, very truly gonna miss her. Um, I think what hurt the most about everything is that um, me and Crystal actually weren't speaking at the time when everything happened, so I really feel like I, Time was stolen from us to make more memories. But um, I know deep down in my heart, and I know she still cared for me regardless of the time that we did spend away from each other. And I'm always remember. Sorry. I'm always remember her. And mom, I love you, Crystal. That's it. Hello everyone, my name is Dawn, I wrote Minds Down. I have had the pleasure of being part of Danielle's life book through her husband, O. I have spent quality time with her throughout the years sharing life stories and doing things friends are known to do throughout the years like travel while supporting each other's endeavors. We even went to Europe together, Spain and Paris to be exact. I've also come to know Crystal as well through the bond that I've had with Danielle. I've also done, done Crystal's hair over the years and listened to her teenage stories. I watched Crystal inspire to take on the entertainment industry with her talents. I've also watched them together. And the one thing that I consistently saw was an unbreakable bond, a love story between a mother and a daughter that some people rarely get to experience. During those times, you never think that you are a part of someone's life book as we all wrestle with the dilemma in this sort of senseless and tragic situation. It starts to plague the heart and the what ifs and the whys and what we could have done differently if we knew or even if we were there. However, the reality is we are all powerless when it's our time to go. My belief is that God makes no mistakes and my friend was attached to the hip to her daughter. I believe in my heart of hearts that she wouldn't have made it anyway on this earth without her. 
That is how close they were in my eyes. We cannot do anything other than thank God that he allowed us to love them while they were here. You write your story here on earth and, walk, and your walk determines your legacy. And although society wants us to believe that you can only accomplish that through wealth and materialistic means, I know that isn't so. Danielle left the story in the hearts of everyone she touched. The very thing that comes to memory is that infectious smile that was a constance on her, fa on her face. Her meeting a stranger was non-existent. She touched lives, and that is what legacies are for, to make you better in any kind of way. Those same qualities that we adored in Danielle was simply passed along to Crystal. We find it hard to believe that someone could love so effortlessly, even to the ones that we believe shouldn't have the access to that kind of pure love. But yet they did because one of them mastered pure love and the other one was learning to master it from the pro at heart. Do I want questions answered? Do I want closure? Do I want punishment? Absolutely. Yet I want to have a love legacy. I want the story of my life to be told in the eyes of others like the eyes that I saw at that candlelight vigil. Only pure love can bring that kind of story to fruition. Everything that we know about Danielle and Crystal individually is what the whole story was truly about. No matter how big or how minute, we all were part of a chapter. And although part of the story was tragic in our carnal eyes, the ending chapter was beautiful because it was simply about pure love. As you reflect on your own legacy, does your life book need tweaking? You still have time to edit the chapter so that your legacy will be told in love. Amen. Would Michael Thomas come forward? And while he's coming, would Larry Williams be prepared? Are you going to speak? After we're blessed with another song, the words you hear will be words of eulogy. I'm going to try. I'm going to try my best to get through this song. Deliver me. Lord, deliver me. All I ever do is seem to hurt me. Hurt me. Lord,
Amen. So this is the time in the program where we give reflective words of our loved ones. Hopefully we'll be able to do this Danielle Sims was born March 31st, 1974, in New York City, the third eldest of seven children born to Dwight L. Green Sr. and Barbara Green. Danielle departed this life on Sunday, September 6, 2020. Um, she was greeted at Heaven's Gate by her grandmother, Agnes L. Tunstall, father Dwight L. Green Sr., brother Ali Sharif H. Green, and her grandmother, Agnes L. Tunstall, cousin Benjamin Brabham, and daughter Crystal Sharice Williams. Danielle gave her life to Christ in her early teens as our fam at our family church, Merritt Park Baptist Church in Queens, New York. After she relocated from New York City, New York to Lawrenceville, Georgia, and hence became a member of the New Mercies Church, Lilburn, Georgia. Danielle's favorite passage of scripture comes from Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Danielle attended Springfield High School in Springfield Gardens, New York. After graduating high school, her career choices led to her executive assistant position, up to and including her last place of employment with Prime America. Danielle Sims, what an honor to have known her, from her tender, sweet, tender sweetheart to her bright, inviting smile. No one had ever been so purely filled with joy and a gate, love no matter what the circumstances. Danielle was an optimist, a great listener, with a warm spirit and always having encouraging words to share. Keep in mind that as a sweet and kind hearted as she was, she also put on the armor of God, standing strong in the face of the demon to protect her children. And I, and as I imagine she said, not my children demon, get thee behind me. And I know she did. Danielle has always had um, uniqueness about, uniqueness, excuse me, uniqueness about her expelling greatness from her core. As a young girl, she was a fighter, and as an adult, she grew into a fearless warrior. Her effervescence poured out her blessings to all who came in, her, in contact. Nothing could take her sunshine away, and there were tests and trials that she faced, but the legacy she followed and had been following reassured her of her strength. To know her meant you were family, and family was everything to Danielle. Even those whose taxes she prepared felt like she was a big sister to them. How amazing of a person was she, heaven sent. Her greatest accomplishment and greatest joy were being a mother, which stands for magnificent, outstanding, tender, honorable, extraordinary, remarkable. And she was an epitome of motherhood, raising her children in her image to be brilliant, fearless, strong, rambunctious leaders, overachievers, dreamers, and most of all, God-fearing believers. Danielle also shared a unique relationship with each of her children. Their bonds were unimaginably strong. She would speak so highly of her children, Mark, the oldest. She was so proud of his boldness, his growing wisdom, his, courage, his courageous ability to follow and conquer his dreams while keeping God close to his heart. Malachi, the baby, the sweet one, 
with his unwavering faith in God and his dedication to being as great as she was as humble and completely brilliant. Crystal, the baby girl, very clever, the fighter, strong-headed, insanely hilarious, goal-oriented entrepreneur, then the love of her life, her husband. Oh, you know, I just messed up your name. I'm gonna say old Sims, after all these years. Who became her life partner, best friend, and confidant, and made a smile like I've never seen a smile before. Oh, you really did. This says Danielle leaves behind, but she's not leaving any of us behind, because she's here in spirit, and she's with us each and every one of us, and all the people that are live streaming who couldn't be here. Um, she leaves behind um, old Sims, two sons, Mark L. Williams and Malachi Williams, two brothers, Dwight L. Green Jr. and, and Daphne, and Pleasure L. Green and Ashley, three sisters, Sharice Calfani, amazing job, Sharice, everything you did, Asia Thompson, amazing job, Asia, and husband Kareem, Kia S. Green, who wrote some beautiful words too, and her husband Edwin Triplett. Aunts, Sheila Holmes, love you. Pastor, um, Tina Norton. Wait a minute. Mother, Barbara Green. Okay. Pastor Tina Norton, husband Pastor Curtis, Edwina Oates, um, and Jeffrey, Audrey Clark, and husband Michael, Dr. Edward Main Tonsil Jr., wife Jan, and Jay Brabham, great aunts Zella Hicks, and Virgie Austin. She also leaves behind to celebrate her life a large host of nieces, nephews, cousins, friends, co workers who loved her dearly. We were all devastated and completely saddened by the loss of our present angel. Okay, now on to um, Crystal Sharice Williams, um, who was born on August 15, 1998 at North Shore Hospital in Queens, New York. She was the second born child to Danielle Green and Mark Williams, and she was adored and treasured by her parents grandparents and family. Because her birth was hugely significant and special, Crystal was the only girl to be born in her paternal family for three generations. Crystal was a sweet and loving little girl. Her father, Mark, affectionately refer referenced Crystal as his baby girl. Mark once proudly recounted how she would attend to him after his long shifts as a sanitation worker by bringing him his slippers as she greeted him at the door. Crystal was both caring and direct. Mark's sentiments regarding his daughter was that she didn't take much crap which she got from, from my side of the family, and she was also very gentle and caring when she got from my mother's side. She was not afraid to correct whatever or whoever was in the wrong. She would then follow up with a joke or two to remind you that she loved you and she cared. Crystal stood for love. She hated to, be, to see good people be treated poorly and was adamantly, adamantly about uh, Adam, excuse me, about honoring what was right. In 2017, Crystal graduated from Brookwood High School in Snellville, Georgia, one of the top high schools in the state. As an independent young lady, she had proven to be, since birth, she naturally tried her hand at being an entrepreneur. Her mother, Danielle, supported her efforts wholeheartedly. Danielle was truly her biggest cheerleader and devoted her life to making sure that Crystal, as well as Mark and Malachi, had everything they needed and more in this life to succeed. Crystal Williams was one of the God's greatest masterpieces. When he created her, he knew that she would be one of his spirits who effortlessly, effortlessly changed lives. Destined for greatness alongside her mother, she became a force to be working with. She was strong inside and out, courageous, beautiful, and she possessed the ability to bring out greatness in others. Her strong foundation required that she would demand respect, which she did truly. Her little brother Malachi, whom she shares a birthday with, 
will always cherish the support, dedication, and love his sister maintained with him. Crystal truly shared his interests and was generally invested in his success. She would sit for hours playing video games with him and even helped him when he decided he wanted to pursue a career in modeling. Anything Malachi wanted or needed, she would find a way to support him. He always thought of her as a second mother figure. Crystal's brothers will cherish her smile that brightened any dark day. Siblings may bicker, but they maintain loyal to one another and always had an unconditional love for one another without it being spoken, especially when it came to their brother Malachi. To her older brother Mark, she was the coolest girl he had ever known, and she took her mother's lead when it came to being strong, proud, loving woman. She had a unique and special relationship with everyone in her family. She made time to love them all in her vibrant manner, her paternal grandmother, Annie Williams, who affectionately was called Ma by Crystal. Remembers Crystal frequently calling to check up on her and make sure that she was okay. As her only granddaughter, they had a truly special bond. Crystal's family grew even larger when her mom married her second husband, O. Sims, better known as O. In 2010, O's love for his stepdaughter and stepsons was and still is unconditional. There are so many memories to be shared following this union, it was an easy addition. The Sims, Greens, and Williams family instantly became one. Crystal was especially close to O's sister, Simona Sims, one of O's favorite things to call Crystal was my princess, as she truly carried herself in that manner. Crystal always had an effervescent personality. She was always well-dressed and put together, always. Uh, always posing for pictures. She seemed to always have the presence of a model. From there, she began to cultivate all her natural talents and bring them together to ultimately become a beauty influencer. She told she sold t-shirts and other merchandise and was soon to launch her own exclusive content online. Much like her mother, Crystal had a smile that would make you feel like you were kissed by the sun. Her laugh was so contagious and it would fill you up with hope. Her presence would let you know that everything would be all right because of her cheerful personality and her cheerful personality, any encounter with Crystal will remind you that this life is so much better when you feel it with fun. Crystal was a kind, was a kind and could, Crystal was one of a kind. She could relate to anyone about anything. She was open to criticism, highly intelligent, a little wild, a lot wild, and free, yet classy. She was at the beginning of her journey when she gained her wings. But God knows what is best and calls her home for keeping, for, you know, for his keeping. The blessing overall is that she was able to bring her best friend and confidant, her protector, her mother, Danielle Sims, to heaven with her. Crystal was a bright light that will be missed. There will never be another fiery, fierce, genuine love like her. Rest in peace, sweet princess. Crystal was preceded in death by her um, grandfather, um, Lawrence Williams, and Dwight Green Sr., and her uncle, Ali Green. Crystal was survived by her father, Mark Williams, her bonus dad, O. Sims, grandmothers, Annie Williams and Barbara Green, aunt and godmother, Sharice Calfani, her namesake, her namesake, and who she's very much like. <laughs> and then aunts, Asia and Kareem Thompson, um, Kia and Edwin, Edwin um, Green, and Simona Sims, um, uncles Dwight and, and his wife Daphne Green, Pleasure, um, Pleasure and Ashley Green, and Larry Williams, and uncle and godfather Marc Francois, who also said that he used to call her his princess too, so I wanna say that, as well as a host of aunts, uncles, cousins, and friends. And I just wanna say one more thing, this has been such a beautiful celebration of life for two extraordinary women, and I was blessed and honored to know them and to be part of their family. And to know Danielle is to love Danielle, and she would give her shirt off her back for anyone and everyone, and she made everyone feel like they were special. Because she would be rattling off all the, I said, who's that, Danielle? Who's this, who's that? But everybody was important, everybody was special.
Danielle was one of a kind. So that obituary and those kind words of reflection, that was the eulogy of these two that spoke of their lives. Eulogy is to speak kindly of, and you all have done that today and reflected the personality of these two that God called the number of their days. Let me explain what I mean when I say that. Jesus said, as we read earlier, I notice you all chose the same scripture, John 14, one through three, where Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions and I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. When Jesus said that, he's speaking literally, not metaphorically. When he says, let not your heart be troubled, he realizes that the separation of a loved one troubles your hearts. He knows that because he experienced it firsthand. On the cross, what took place wasn't simply Jesus giving his life for the sins of all mankind which he did. But what took place was the separation of Jesus the Son physically from God the Father spiritually. And that's the one time that he cried out, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? And so there's that burdening pain of having been forsaken by a loved one. I've coined that occurrence, the yin and yang of love. In that I mean that if you love someone, then when you're separated with them, there'll be some pain. If you don't want to feel the pain of having lost a loved one, then your only option is to never love. But how can you resist? You all gave testimony to a smile like crystals, or a personality like Danielle's. I didn't even know him personally, didn't have to. I got a perfect picture in my mind right now of the two glowing, loving personalities of these two. In a selfish way, I don't blame God. I would have said to these two, come home with me. I need you by my side. My son needs more bright light. But in the wake, of their transition, their leaving. I don't call it death, because for those who are in Christ, there is no death, not as others know death. It's not a finality. It's a temporal act. I know you're hurting. I know you're in pain. I know you feel lost, loved one. I can't say I know exactly how you feel, because that's impossible. Only you know how you feel. Only you have had your individual personal experiences and relationships with these two. But I know it hurts. And Jesus knows it hurts. And he commend you, don't let your heart be troubled. He said, don't be tricked by Satan into believing that you've lost them. They're not absolutely lost. Someone said that. They have simply taken a vacation from your current physical presence. They've gone on before you to a special place prepared for each and every one of us. Jesus said that. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. What's the sense in Jesus preparing a place for you if you never plan to go there? And it's not just a place. He said, a mansion. In my Father's house are many mansions. It's a promise, he said, if we're not true, I would have told you. Jesus speaks no lies, only truth. This isn't just a place of something to celebrate. When he says, 
I go to prepare a place for you. Think of hitting the lottery for those who, you play, who play it. I know none of you play it, but anybody else would. <laughs> if you hit the lottery, you would be jumping up and down and turning flips. You'd say, I have millions of dollars in my access. I'm gonna buy the biggest house, the biggest mansion, and everything in it that makes my soul happy. These two have that mansion. Their hearts have ceased from trouble. Their bodies have ceased from pain. No more finances, no more headaches, no concern of coronavirus. They'll never need to wear a mask again. There is no, dark, no darkness, because Jesus says he's the light. God is the light. They're living in the mansion of perfect surroundings in the presence of God. So when they are absence from our presence, their presence with the Lord. God says he's prepared a place for you. My question to you is, are you ready? They were ready and they left our presence. God said it was their time. We all have a time, by the way. Man doesn't live physically eternally. We're all given once to die. And then the judgment. Jesus said to be absent from the flesh is to be present with the Father in heaven. So are you ready? Have you surrendered your lives to Jesus Christ? Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But 6.23 says, The wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. This is not only a time of celebration, but a time of reckoning. We're finite individuals. We're not infinite as God. We live on a temporary basis and then we transition from this life to our eternal life. So that's where the celebration should be. We should be celebrating their transition, their having left of pain and turmoil and trouble. Yes, you'll grieve for a season. The prophet says in Ecclesiastes, there's a season for everything under the sun a season to make merry and a season to be sad. A time to work and a time to rest. Time to live and a time to cease from living. These two have finished their work. They have entered into the rest of Jesus Christ. It's their time to transition. So my question is only to you, and this I'll finish. And then we'll have the reading of acknowledgments and we'll ask the funeral home to come forward. Not much left to be said of the lives of these two. They lived a lovely life. They bought back the time. They lived loving, kind, gentle, long-suffering. They lived a life after the admonition and the righteousness of Christ. What about you? Is there anyone here that has not surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ today? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand or come forward at this time. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and I'm going to pray. And if you have not prayed this prayer, pray it with me. Father in heaven, Thank you for blessing me with life and health and strength. And forgive me for all of my sins and transgressions. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and God wrapped in the flesh. I believe that he gave his life for me, bled and died willingly for my sins as payment for my sins. Lord, I accept your Son as my Savior. 
I accept his blood as my cleansing. Please accept me as your child and write my name in your Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. Thank you for having me, and thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Michelle, Sister Elder Smith. A resolution in memory of your precious loved one, Danielle Sims and Crystal Williams. I, along with Sister Lena Kearney and the New Mercies Christian Church family, wish to express our sincere sympathy to you, Brother O. Sims, and the passing of your beloved wife and daughter, and to Malachi Sims and the passing of your beloved mother and sister. We know the passing of your loved one has caused pain and sadness in your heart today. The place once filled with kindness and love now holds precious memories to take you through this trying time. Danielle Sims and Crystal Williams is and will always be deep in your heart, and that will continue as long as there is life within you. We pray the almighty and merciful God grant solace and consolation to the entire family. Romans chapter 8 verses 38 through 39 states, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth nor any other created thing, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Be it resolved, a copy of this resolution is placed in the permanent records of our church in memory of Danielle Sims and Crystal Williams, done by the Order of the Family of Faith, New Mercies Christian Church, on this day, Monday, September 21st, 2020. Forever Christ, Jesse Kearney III, Senior Pastor. With that, we ask that the Watkins Funeral Home come forward.
God a hand clap of praise. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. We came here to, to celebrate, to celebrate these two beautiful young lady life. Praise give and honor to God and to the officiating ministers, the family I have to say. Thank you for all your consoling words, what you have said to console this family. The family simply say thank you. To the many friends who gather the family also, acknowledge you their appreciation for your coming, sharing, and passing on. What have you done? Caught flower or just simply said a prayer. Your presence here means so much to this family. And for that, this family, thank you. To this family, on behalf of myself and our Douglasville location, we take this time out to acknowledge you our appreciation for you chose to be your funeral counselor doing your hour of bereavement. And in doing so, we pray to more in place for the keep it true to one or two me. Run them again. May God bless you. Saxophone, you got another number for me? Look, you can get a live one up. Let's rejoice. Okay, let's. <laughs> Thank you. 